Welcome to Delightful! Seeing how I've dressed the set in nothing but sugary, sweet, pastel-themed dolls, you know what's coming. I recently took a trip back to the States to see my family and purchased my first Shopkins doll, Little Jessie Cake, here while I was over there. I love this little doll and wanted to keep her as is, but I was also feeling inspired to try customizing a Shopkins doll. So I hopped on eBay and purchased a small lot of used dolls from someone in North Dakota. Ta-da! Before too long, these four cuties arrived in the mail. I love buying secondhand dolls for projects. You wonder what child played with them before and what adventures they went on. Who should we make over? I think among all the girls that came, this one stands out. To the work table! During my flight back home, I drew a couple character sketches. It's a 14 hour flight, so you gotta do something, right? Not sure if I'd adhere strictly to any one of these, but thought I'd show you nonetheless as a part of my brainstorming process. The alien girl is pretty cute though, we might have to make her later. <laughs> She's been rooted with thick blue hair, which seems worth saving, so I tie it off before cutting it off. Nice and stubbly. Might as well remove the skirt. Aw, oh, it's so poofy. The next step is usually removing the doll's head via dunking her into hot water to soften the vinyl, then pulling it apart from her body. I guess I wasn't thinking about it, going through the motions or something, because I quickly came to realize that, duh, the neck hole is way too small. Pulling hair out from the inside with pliers like I normally would for a larger doll isn't going to work here. Alright, fine. Plan B it is. This is when doll customizing becomes unintentionally violent, so bear with me. Slice open the back of the head within the hair area for some impromptu brain surgery. Just kidding. We're pulling out the remaining plugs from the inside of the head. Eventually, she's all cleaned out and ready for the next step. Take pure acetone, dip a Q-tip or tissue in there, press it against the face, and twist away and up. The factory paint should lift right off. Rinse the head with warm soapy water to remove any leftover residue. Time to fill the hair back in. I'm thinking Pink Floyd from the Doll Planet looks very promising. I prep the surface with pink paint before I begin the reroute so that the hair will look more full. Pinch off a plug's worth of hair, press one end of the hank with your other hand, and peel it away for a clean separation. Loose doll hair can become an unusable tangled mass very quickly if you're not careful, so take it slow. Insert each plug into the head at a 90 degree angle, then remove the tool. Shoppy's vinyl heads are thicker than Monster High, so this reroute took a little more effort and broke two of my needles in the process. She's going to have one bun on top of her head, so I planned the reroute accordingly. Anytime the hair parts, you want it to appear full at the part. So I'm rooting two condensed rows side by side along a semicircle, which will crisscross to form the bun and the part later on. Alright, all the plugs are in. I plugged shorter hair where the bangs are just to save hair. Because of the tiny neck hole, again, we can't pour glue in like we normally do. That's why I've kept the cut open this entire time. Take a waterproof glue and with a paintbrush, mush it all up in there. It did feel a little awkward trying to avoid getting glue on the outside, but I could see what I was doing for once, so I was confident in the amount of coverage I got. Usually, there's a little guesswork involved. Set your sea urchin monster aside and wait for the glue to dry. Now, I might as well reunite the head with the body. In retrospect, there was no reason to separate them in the first place. What about the giant gouge in the back of her head, you're wondering? Well, it's not the most elegant solution, but it is sturdy. Take a strong needle and thread and close it up. Easier said than done, I know. The thread and plugs want to tangle, and going through the plastic takes some effort. Use a pair of pliers to pull it through the vinyl. Now for some styling. Remember those two rows we plugged around the crown? Separate them apart. The goal here is to crisscross each plug to the opposite side. One goes up, one comes down, etc. 
Use a needle to draw out each individual plug, and twist tie off hair you aren't using so that it doesn't slip and mess up your progress. I've seen this done on factory dolls before. Whereas plugging one solid line creates a nice part, you do risk creating this chasm in the vinyl and ripping it apart. So if you're worried about breaking the doll head, maybe try this method. It's a little safer for the head, but it takes a lot of patience. Pour boiling water over the doll to tame the poofiness and set the style. Use any leftover hot water for tea. After the boil wash, it was obvious I didn't fill out the part enough, so I had to go back in and fill it some more. Isn't that always the case? So, after a couple more back and forths between plugging, tying, and boil washing, I achieved the cute hairstyle I was after. Well, almost. We'll make the finishing touches at the end. It was at this point in the project where my vision about this doll completely changed. I was going to make some kind of cupcake sweets-themed cutie, but friend of the channel Sucre.May on Instagram was like, Hey, I think you'd really like this pastel girl challenge. And I was like, what's that? And she introduced me to the pastel girl app. I've seen people posting these cute little characters all over Instagram, so I kind of knew what it was, but I finally caved and downloaded it for myself. And yes, it's adorable. It's a simple dress-up game, but very well done. So I tried to assemble a character that shares my doll's pink hairstyle, and I came up with this cutie. And like five others because I couldn't stop myself, but we'll be making this one. A Shopkin doll's proportions are a little more chibi-fied, but I'm sure she'll turn out similar. So, to begin, I need to remove this bow on the doll's front, cute as it may be. I remove the majority of the bow with short, controlled strokes of a box cutter, then finish up the job with nail files and sanding blocks. I nicked a small hole into her, but it'll be fine. Oops. Starting with a paper pattern, I cut out and adjust a cone shape until it looks about right for a dress. This will make a very simple dress. She's so small, it's barely going to use any fabric. The dress is a light yellow color in the game, so I picked out this cotton fabric. Although looking at it now, it's not as saturated as it should be, but it was the closest color I own. Because this dress is so teeny tiny, opt for fray check over a turned edge hem. On this scale, you can barely afford the bulk of two layers of fabric. I cut out the frilly green neckline and fray check that as well. From now on, just assume that I'm fray checking everything. For her skirt, I cut two 6 by 20 centimeter long strips, which fold in half. Also for her skirt is a small length of elastic that fits comfortably around her waist. She's got two large accessories, a bag and a pair of wings, which I sketched out on paper first before cutting the fabric pieces. With all our loose fabric pieces cut out, it's time to stitch them together. Starting with the dress. Measure the circumference around the doll's chest, add one centimeter, and cut a ribbon to that length. Sew a gather stitch along the neckline. Pull together the fabric. Pin your gathered neckline to the ribbon and sew. Gather the frill along the top as well. Right sides facing, sew the frill on upside down to the front of the dress at the neckline. Now you can fold it down and iron it flat to stay in place. Sew two Velcro straps to each side of the dress. Then tie a knot into some embroidery thread. Try the dress on the doll, mark where you want the straps to start, and insert the embroidery thread at your marker. Try it on again to mark where it should connect in the back, and to see how short the straps need to be. Tie it off and cut to finish the straps. For her skirt, sew the elastic band together. Gather both lengths of the folded over fabric strips and stitch them to the waistband using a whip stitch. That's the up and around stitch so that it can expand with the elastic. I sew white on first and yellow on second. Her bag is a shooting star, so to translate this drawing into 3D, I sew a long rectangular strip of fabric all the way around the parameter of one of the star pieces. Then stitch the opposite star on.
Leave a small area unstitched so that we can turn it right side out like so. Let's fill out the shape with some stuffing. If you save the excess fluff from making yarn hair like I do, you'll have plenty of stuffing at your disposal. Take a small tuft, get that cat hair out of here, and stuff it inside. Stitch the gap closed using what's called a ladder stitch, which will perfectly hide the seam. You guys actually taught me this stitch in the comments of Cora's video. As adorable as this little derpy star is, it came out too big for the Shopkins doll. It can't be her bag, but maybe it can be her pillow? I made another smaller one off camera using the same steps, and that's much better. Wrap a small strip of ribbon around her body to gauge how long you want the strap to be. Cut and heat seal the edges, stitch one end to the star, and leave the other loose. Sew a snap to either side of the strap. I already had pastel green ribbon, but to complete the design, I used acrylic paint to add the lilac and pink sides of the pastel rainbow. I also paint colorful stars onto the big star. Her wings are basically tiny pillows with stitching accents. Take two wing shapes and sew them together around the edge, leaving a place to turn them right side out and stuff them as well. Take the same thread and double back to create feather lines on the wing. Now to attach them to her back. To simplify things, I sew them together on the very back of the dress, so that when she puts it on, it looks like this. I almost forgot her socks. Cut out a rectangle of stretchy white knit fabric. Hand stitch the rectangle together fairly close to the leg, starting from toe and working your way up. Don't make it super tight against the leg because we need some space for the seam allowance to turn and be on the inside. Cut off the excess, remove and flip the sock inside out, and there you go. I don't have any super tiny pastel colored ribbon, so I'm opting to use fabric paint instead for the ribbon details. I know the pastel girl I made in the app has cute kitty slippers, but I think they'd look too crowded on this Shoppies doll. Let's add two bows to her dress, too. Hmm. I mean, they almost look like bows. Fabric paint won't work for her hair bows, so let's make those out of cardstock. Paint the back of a cereal box with all the cute pastel colors you want. Cut out the colors once they're dry, and proceed to make little hourglass butterfly bow shapes. Great! They'll be ready to add after her face up. All the clothing is done! Her body base was pink, so use acrylic paints to match the color to her skin. I didn't bother cutting off the skirt because I think it'll help hold up the dress shape in the end. Seal in and protect the acrylic paint from chipping by using DuraClear Matte Varnish. I mix it with water, then give the surface two to three coats. At last, she's ready for her new face. Pull back and secure the hair out of the way with the cloth. Stick pins into the cloth around the hairline for a tight seal around the face. That's right, it's return of the head burrito. Prep the face with Mr. Hobby's Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat for an optimal work surface. Don't forget to wear your mask. It was very humid that day, so I had my doubts it would stick. To try and combat that, I gave the doll three coats before starting, and hope for the best. I wanted to stay fairly close to the app's art style, so I'm sketching out big, happy-looking anime eyes. With a flatter face like this Shoppies doll, there is significantly less eye molding to help you place your drawing and keep things even. So, take measurements from things like the corners of the mouth or the distance from the ears to give yourself some sense of where to place the eyes. If you mess up and give your doll major wonk eyes, don't sweat it. Just erase and try again. With that in mind, it pays to sketch lightly until you're sure of the placement. Even with the humid weather, this doll's face is taking my watercolor pencils very well. I usually can't get my mint green to stick to anything. To 
make her even more anime-esque, I'm drawing on the little blush marks in pink pencil. Use darker browns to bring out the lashes, eyebrows, and iris shape. I like these blob eyelashes on the bottom. They're in the Pastel Girl Games artwork, but I like that it pays homage to the characteristic Shoppy's eyelashes too. Time to bring out the subtle details. I darken the iris rim with dark green and sharpen the lines of the mouth. I tried to bring the corners of her mouth up and out to exaggerate her happy and excited expression. Let's bust out the paints. I know the Pastel Girl app keeps the irises solid colors, but I just can't resist adding the shine. The tongue also needed a little help standing out. Spray the doll with one more layer of Mr. Hobby's Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat to make it permanent. Then we can release her from the head burrito and finish styling the hair. To make a subtle wave, braid sections of the hair together and tie them with a band. Bigger braids make subtle waves, and smaller braids make tighter waves. Boil wash these sections again to set the style. I really, really wanted a little space bun on top of her head. I tried twisting it and parting it and tying it all sorts of different ways. I even added gel, but no matter what I did, I couldn't achieve that perfect oven roll shape. I had to settle on this instead. It seems for perfect space bun shapes, yarn hair is the only way to go. The way her bun is now looks more like a seashell. I guess that's cute. I needed to trim the bangs down to size, which is the scariest part for me. You know how great my track record is for bangs. Yeah, I've done worse. Once the hair is completely dry, remove the braids and trim any straggly ends. Great! Let's play dress up! Oh, I almost forgot her hair bows! Pop a dab of glue onto a bow and gently place it onto the bangs. She's also got a pearl band circling her bun, so I strung a couple beads onto a thread, looped it around the bun, and tied it in place. To tie the pearls back into the outfit, I thought I'd add a couple smaller pearl accents to the dress. And with that, our pastel girl is complete! Designing the doll is hands down my favorite part. Like when it comes to doll customizing, usually at least 80% of the fun is designing the character, for me personally. But this was a special case where I was so charmed by the cute pastel designs in the game, I was fine creating those. I think anime faces work really well on shoppies. I also love how some shoppies, particularly like the older ones I think, have that borderline crazy expression. I don't know if that's intentional or not, but it kind of grew on me. So I'm glad I carried that expression over to my face up as well. It must be the mouth shape. The reroute was pretty difficult due to the tiny neck hole in the thicker vinyl head. So for my next Shoppies custom, I'm thinking a wig or glued on hair will be the way to go. What do you guys think? Have you ever tried your hand at customizing a Shoppies doll before? It was a surprisingly different experience for me. Give that like button a boop if you love pastel dolls as much as I do, and subscribe to the channel so that you never miss a customizing video. We have a lot of fun here. Thank you so much for watching! Stay artsy! Annyeong!